Recognized. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Uh, let me begin by asking unanimous consent to enter into the congressional record a article uh, labeled Lena Khan's unfair and deceptive approach to antitrust. Without objection. Mr. Speaker, I support Title II of this bill, and actually uh, I would vote for it if it was set up as a, second, uh, as a separate bill as it once was. I would support Title, actually I would not support Title III, but the real issue is Title I and the money, the $1.4 billion that it would provide uh, actually to the Department of Justice and uh, the FTC. The, the assertions that it would not are not supported by the record. Let me explain, however, wh what's not happened that should have in order to make this this $1.5 billion is supportable. And what hasn't happened is we have not had Chairwoman Lena Khan appear before us in our Judiciary Committee. It seems odd that we wouldn't find out how this money is going to be spent before we allocate it uh, to the uh, purposes reflected in the record. Let me just read from a recent speech at Fordham University where Chair Lena Khan outlined an aggressive new approach to the agency's competition policy. Under her leadership, she explained, the FTC will interpret unfair methods of competition broadly, block mergers that could reflect an incipient trend toward monopoly, reject efficiency defenses, and contends that conglomerate, conglomerates harm consumers irrespective of economic evidence. In Khan's view, her agenda is fundamentally conservative because it shows respect for the rule of laws reflected in congressional intent to quote, uh, the U.S. Chamber of Commerce Khan's speech harkens back to George Orwell's Ministry of Truth, where words apparently lose all meaning. Khan's agenda rejects the rule of law in favor of a progressive policy agenda that grants the government total discretion to challenge any merger for any reason whatsoever, ignoring basic economics, history, and decades of precedent from the Supreme Court. More troubling is the fact that Khan's agenda would allow the agency to challenge any private conduct that conflicts with her progressive notions of fairness. Section 5 of the FTC Act directs the agency to combat unfair methods of competition. Historically, the agency has tied this authority to what's in the consumer's economic interest, which used closely to other main antitrust statutes, namely the Sherman and Clayton Act. As a result, the FTC provided Section 5 with context, guardrails, and predictability, which are all integral to the rule of law. Why didn't we have Chairwoman Khan appear before us and explain why she wants to vary so dramatically from the, what's been the law for the past 30 years. Under the FTC's new leadership in however anything goes, the new strategic plan for the FTC condemns unwarranted health, safety, and privacy risk and seeks equity for historically unserved communities. These issues, while important, lie far, far outside the FTC's statutory authority or competence under Chair's Con, uh, Chair Khan's reading of Section 5. The FTC can do whatever it pleases. Without guardrails, for example, the FTC should condone as fair, could condone as fair, a merger that would result in job losses, even when that merger would lower costs and lead to lower prices for consumers. Mr. Chair, Mr. Speaker, this is a bill whose time is not right. We don't know how the money is going to be spent, and I urge no vote. I yield back.